Hey, what's up guys? Silicon Slave here. Today uh, I got a short quick tutorial for you guys. We're going to be making some DNB or Respace. Um, and we're going to be doing that in Zebra 2. Uh, this one's like sort of a little extension on the one we did on Neurobase before. It's kind of just like a more complex, more warpy, weird version of the Neurobase. Um, anyway, here's what it sounds like. <laughs> So you see you got a lot of movement, a lot of weird sort of shit going on there. Let's uh, let's jump right in. Yes. Okay, so that's what we've got so far. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a second oscillator. And we're going to take the first oscillator, we're going to detune it to about the first one, and we're going to do the same in reverse to the second one. <laughs> cool we just that just you know get them as wide as we can without it sounding too weird and, and dissonant um, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get a shaper we're gonna add that in we're gonna put it to wedge mode turn the edge all the way up then we're just gonna play around with the depth until we find some something that we think sounds good <laughs> I think that's pretty good. So next we're gonna add some more distortion. We're gonna get distortion one and turn the input up a little bit. And we're just gonna play around with this center frequency and try and figure out somewhere in the middle. That's sounding pretty good to me. So, next thing we're going to do is we're going to split the signal. So right now we only have it going down this one channel, but in order to get sort of more movement going on, what we're going to do is we're going to split it, and now with this channel we're going to put a VCF. We're going to make this one VCF2. And we're going to put this to bandpass, and we're going to turn the res up just a little bit. Maybe a little bit of drive too. Cool, I like that. Um, now we're going to start getting some movement in that with the multi stage envelope. So we got this thing here. We can start adjusting um, since it's so close to the edge. Let's make it go down, I think. And as we go, we can kind of just start drawing. If you hold command, you'll add an extra point in. Okay. Yeah, and we might, we'll put this on 16th, I think, as well. Do is just loop this. Yeah, I think that's a good start. Okay, so now we need to start adding some filters into this side. So the first thing we're going to do is just call this one VCF1. We're going to get a notch filter. We're going to have this one also controlled by the multi stage envelope gain. But this one, let's have it go when this one's going down. In fact, we might turn this down a little bit. Yeah, we want it to be more. Cool. 
cool. So now we can start playing with this. Turn the res a little bit. Turn the res. See, we're already starting to get. What we can also do if we want to like add some more, we can add another. Now let's cut this down to one, maybe. Okay, so now we're going to add one more filter in. It's going to be CF3. Make this a low pass of sight. Can I drive over just yeah, No drive. going so now we can go we're gonna go into the global section here we're gonna start adding effects to the thing first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add another VCF and we're gonna make this one another notch and this is just to give it even more just a little bit of movement and let's put this one as LFO one if we can find it sounding pretty good so far um, let's see so next thing we're gonna do we're gonna put a shaper in here and this one's just gonna be in shape mode turn the edge down to like pretty low a little bit extra crunch. Um, next thing, we're gonna get mod effects. We're gonna get the chorus. We're gonna turn the low frequency up in the EQ. So we get that through just fine. We turn the mix down here. So now we're gonna dial in the mix till it sounds the way we want. One last. 
pass VCF is going to go low pass. This one's also going to go to the LFO. Just ever so lightly. Last but not least, we're going to put a compressor at the end. Turn down the threshold, turn up the compression. I want to compress the shit out of it. Oops, we're clipping a little bit, so we're going to turn it down. You can see it really just gives it that pop right at the start. That's sounding pretty good. Um, so there was one thing I forgot to do, which is uh, I was gonna put a noise oscillator there, but honestly, it's probably fine the way it is. So anyway, there's that, and then the last thing. It's always yeah, to show you. I'll just show you with and without. So this is like a little post processing rack I put together. <laughs> It really takes it that extra little bit, so I'll, we'll just go through and I'll break down what each of the things are doing. Um, let's see. The first one is just a little extra cut in that like 300, like sort of just above the fundamental sort of. Thing. Put it down. Just that's just to like sort of cut out some of the muddiness because you really don't want like this fundamental of the of the bass. And that opens up a lot more room for you to do other shit in that sort of frequency range, um, in the other, you know, other synths and shit. Um, another chorus, pretty straightforward. Maybe even turn down the turn down the mix a little bit. Um Let's see, we've got another there uh, auto filter, so this is just another band pass that's gonna be like sweeping through, going with an envelope and an LFO. So it just gives it an extra little layer of movement going on. Um, so this is a multi-band compressor, and all it's doing we have it set to the same level and the same uh, compressing for each band. And it's just like hitting everything that comes through it. And that's sort of the idea is just to flatten everything off and make sure so you don't have any like too nasty highs or anything like too like boomy in the lows or like in the mids or whatever. It's just like catching everything and sort of squashing it down just the right amount. And then so this OTT that like adds a lot of crunch to the high end. Um, we, what we've done is we've we've gotten the just the default OTT in Ableton. We've turned the time up to 1,000 and the amount down to 39%. Um, I'll just show you what it sounds like with and without it. So yeah, I think it just adds a little nice bit of grit and sort of tames everything nicely too. Uh, another important one is the utility right at the end, and that's just to mono the bass because we've done a lot of like phasing and other like dumb random shit with all the choruses and everything. So you really want to do this uh, set to 155, but you can kind of play around up and down with that depending on what note and how you want to do it. Um, but that's just to make sure everything in the sub bass is like nice and centered. And then finally, we've just got this uh, Pro L, which is just clipping and like pushing everything through it just to give it an extra bit of like attack and nastiness. So here's Anyway, so that's the 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 video. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this is helpful to you guys. You know, like, subscribe, hit the bell, all that dumb shit, uh, you know, helps with the algorithms. Thanks so much guys. I'm Silicon Slave. Good luck with your music. Peace.